Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is a Pilot Metropolitan fountain pen. Um, it's worth highlighting, though, that this is just one of many, many, many possible uh, versions of this little guy. There are many colors available, many materials. This particular Cougarific version just happened to be the one I got as a deal sweetener as a part of another purchase. But uh, nonetheless, uh, this is one of many options, but they're all the Pilot Metropolitan. Let's do a quick size comparison. Right here is a Pilot G2 pen. Right here is a Bic click stick sort of thing. You see, this isn't a huge pen. Uh, this is a Paca Jada, one of my favorite pens to write with. This is a uh, Twisby Eco, or Eco, that is. Can't pronounce Eco today for some reason. But uh, anyways, again, so it's a full-size pen sort of thing. And then my personal favorite, the uh, Caveco Lilliput here. Very interesting little pen there as well. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Pilot Metropolitan here. Okay, so on the good side, first off, this guy comes with both a uh, cartridge converter, well, actually, it's a uh, a squeeze-based converter, as well as one single um, Pilot pen cartridge, uh, which lets you choose between either using prepackaged cartridge ink or uh, bottled ink if you'd like to uh, fill from a bottle with your own uh, ink of choice. And so that's kind of nice that you get that option, especially in sort of a starter pen. I appreciate that. So many folks cheap out on the converters and whatnot. Uh, so that's good. Next thing, I like the size and the shape of this guy very much much. In the pocket, it's very smooth. Uh, there's not really anything to snag on it. it. It just, in the plastic itself is smooth. It's it's just a very nice size and shape. And actually, in the hand, it feels very nice as well. Uh, because this there's no, like, uh, harsh threading or anything. Nothing bites into your hands. You can write with this comfortably for a good long time. And so, I like that very much. Next thing, the cap on this guy is not threaded. It just pops on there. But it is actually pretty secure. You really do need to give it a concerted yank to disconnect it, so to speak. And so, I don't mind the fact that it's not screw on and in some cases that's actually a little bit quicker which is nice um the clip on this guy is fine it's sort of a generic bent springy pen clip there's nothing overwhelmingly interesting about it but it works well and it, it's very nice it mounts relatively high up on the pen so that you can get it into pockets with a ca uh, cap and everything on them and uh you know it's it's just a nice little approach here which is good next thing i gotta say the uh fine tip on this guy is very fine i mean if i give you some writing samples here you can see that this is writing very very thin little lines here. Even comparing this to my Coeco, which is, uh, I'm sorry, Caveco, which is also fine, you can see here that fine means something very different to the Japanese. And this is a uh, well-known sort of thing. Japanese pens tend to be finer in their fine than uh, anybody else, which is kind of a weird thing to say anyways. Then finally, I gotta say it's good that there are so many variations of this guy. This may be actually the least attractive Pilot Metropolitan out there, which is probably why I got such a deal on it. But um, th you can get them in metals, in nice gloss blacks. You can get it in a variety of forms, any of which could look very nice in a variety of situations. So if you want a Metropolitan, you can get any variety. So that to me is what's good here. There's many variations available. The fine tip is very, very fine, which can be very nice for taking compact notes. Uh, the clip works very nicely. The cap is on there securely. The size and shape just feel great for carrying and for writing, and it comes with both a converter and a cartridge, which allows you to choose between bottle and regular ink. Let's talk about what's great here. To be on the great side uh, is the price of this guy. This is cheap. This is a $15 pen that comes with a converter as well as a pilot cartridge. That's a really, really good price. I mean, you are buying, you know, a fountain pen that you could use for a long time, theoretically, for the price of, you know, a pack of regular, you know, Pilot G2s or whatever. Um, maybe they were a little less expensive than that, but still, this is a very, very, very good price for a reasonably decent fountain pen. And to me, that's what's great, the cheapness. Um, let's talk about what's bad, because it's, unfortunately, there's some bad there. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, I gotta say, the writing experience is okay. It's not bad, um, it's just, it's okay. You're certainly gonna get a taste of fountain pen quality. I mean, as you use this guy, it does effortlessly put ink down on the paper there. But the thing is, it feels more than a little bit scratchy. Um, uh, even on very nice paper, it has a little bit of drag to it. Um, it feels maybe a little bit dry, although I tend to like pens to run a little bit wet to put down more ink. Um, and, but this may be in part due to the fineness of this nib. This is really really, really fine. But it's not bad as a writer, but it's also not great. It's not something that brought me incredible joy. So the writing on this guy is okay, um, rather than great as you would want in a higher-end fountain pen. Um, but 15 bucks, whatever. It is also using Pilot's proprietary cartridge format. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one of the Pilot cartridges handy. 
But unlike the international cartridge, the pilot cartridge has a wide end open here, and that's where the ink is staying. And the thing is, the pilot cartridge is fine, but I don't like the fact that they're using a different cartridge standard. The international standard works just fine, and they're just creating a problem that they're going to solve by selling you stuff. And so I really hope that manufacturers kind of move away from proprietary cartridges and go towards a standard, because that just angers me. Then finally, I gotta say, this squeeze filler here is just not great. The way that you use this, and it is full of ink right now, so if I squeeze it, I'm gonna have ink all over myself, but the way you use it is you squeeze these pieces of metal together, and that compresses this little plastic bladder here. When the bladder compresses, there's less room in there, and so you dip the pen into the, uh, into the ink bottle, and then unsqueeze it, and then it expands and pulls the ink back into there. The thing is, although it's got very nice capacity and whatnot. The ink in there seems to dry up pretty readily, and it's also a little bit hard to pull in a meaningful amount. I found myself getting a fair amount of air in there, and, and you know, it, it's kind of a pain in the neck. So it, as far as cartridge converters go, these squeeze adapters have never brought me a lot of joy. I tend to prefer uh, the twisty version where you just unscrew it. Um, that seems to work a little better for me. So um, those are the bad things for me. Uh, the writing is okay. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just kind of right there. Um, it's using a proprietary cartridge that it really doesn't need to be using. Pilot, damn it, stop. And then finally, the squeeze filler on it isn't great. It works, but it doesn't work all that well. Then on the ugly side, honestly, there's nothing that ugly in a $15 fountain pen here. I personally think that this particular pen is very, very ugly. It's got kind of a uh, here's to you, Mrs. Robinson sort of aesthetic, but uh, I think that's mostly a matter of taste. Uh, and so uh, there you go. Let's jump into the final conclusions. Final conclusions, look, at some level, I, there's a lot to like about this pen because of its price. This is the cheapest fountain pen that I have found that is worth a damn. I mean, it's not incredible, absolutely not, and this is not the end of your fountain pen journey. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that if you already have fountain pens, you're probably not going to gain much out of adding this to your collection if this is a representative sample. Um, you're probably already past the level of, well, frankly, writing joy of this guy. But it is absolutely 100% a good starter pen. It'll give you a sense of what whether you like the feeling of a fountain pen, whether you like that smoothness, that pressure-free writing that a fountain pen really allows you to do, um, it gives you that very nicely. And it's also nice as a starter in that it can use cartridges, uh, which is good and handy for a lot of people who may not have bottles of ink lying around their place. Um, or you can use the bottles if you want to try that too. So it reduces kind of the initial amount that you have to buy. You don't have to buy bottles of cartridge converters or cartridges. You can do whatever you'd like with it. That's nice. And the other thing is for the price, 15 bucks, this is cheap enough that you can gift it to somebody. Even if you don't know if they're going to like fountain pens, if you're a big fan of them, this is something you can give to somebody. And worst case, they don't love it and you're out 15 bucks, life goes on. But that said, um, if you're willing to pay just a little bit more, 15 bucks more, so it's double the price, but that's not a whole lot to double, um, there's also this guy. This is the Twisby Eco. Um, this has a couple of major advantages. It is a piston fill pen, so you can see here that it uses this piston here to draw ink up into the bottle, um, which gives you much bigger capacity and frankly much easier fill than this little squeezy number. The nib on it is way better. Um, it is a much much nicer writer than the Metropolitan here. It is just much more of a joy to use. Um, but that said, compared to some of the other Metropolitans, this guy's a little less classy looking. And uh, it is bottle fill only, which is uh, you would have to buy this and the bottle of ink to somebody. But look, this is a very, very, very good pen that happens to be very inexpensive. Whereas I think the Metropolitan is a fine pen for being cheap. Uh, and that's kind of a detailed distinction, but uh, I think this is something you should also be considering, and particularly if you're looking to dip your toes in and you're willing to spend a little more, this is probably where I'd send you instead. But that said, if you really, really want the cheapest way to get into fountain pens, uh, then this is a really nice approach, or if you're looking for a great gift. It's a solid choice. It's a fountain pen. It writes well. You get some versatility in how you use it, and it'll give you a very good sense of whether a fountain pen makes, uh, makes sense in your life. But if you're already in the game and you're looking for a good pen, or you've got just a little bit of flex in the budget to move up a notch, um, I think you can do a little bit better for, uh, well, you can do a whole lot better for just a little bit more. Hope this has been interesting, that I made the uh, right call, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Rawr. Get it? Tiger. Stole weapon. So, okay, I'm done. Bye now.